one of the themes of this channel, one of the things I've spoken about in many videos before, is this idea, this concept of muscle density. Recently, on some videos, there's been comments, you can't increase muscle density and you know what? I didn't coin that phrase. That's how I learned it many years ago and that's how I understand it. So if people want to play with semantics, that's absolutely fine. What I'm talking about is attacking the muscle, working the muscle, training the muscle in a different way to what you might perceive as normal in the sense of the rep ranges. You want to build a foundation of muscle in advance of doing this. So you don't just want to go from zero to this style of training because you're not going to feel the benefits. Once you have that foundation of muscle built, once you've got something to work with, you get to the point where you feel like you don't really need to get bigger per se. Because if you look at me, if you look at any of the pictures, my thumbnails, my videos, I'm not a big guy. But what I enjoy is looking aesthetic, is looking lean, is looking impressive. Once that foundation is established, you're gonna switch your rep range and it's gonna be a bit of a psychological change up for a lot of people because we're so used to this six, 10, 15, 20 rep range that to suddenly drop that down to effectively one, two, three can be quite a shift of the weight that we associate with those higher rep ranges. It's also quite challenging to adapt to lifting this much heavier weight. Imagine if you are aiming for eight to 10 reps, your goal is to be failing at that eight, ninth, 10th rep, right? That is the purpose of that target rep range. Here with this style of training, we're only really looking to fail at maybe two reps because what I've always advised people to do is firstly, just like any workout, warm your muscles up. You're gonna take that range of motion, that form through eight to 10 reps. Get a little blood in there. Also get those joints loosened up. From there, you're gonna drop it down to what I coined primer sets, which is effectively up in the weight, but not pushing yourself beyond your limits. And they're only gonna be four to six reps. You are gonna perform those four to six reps as if you are going to failure. The weight will not challenge you to go to failure, but you're gonna perform them as if you are going to failure. You're gonna take it nice and slow. You are gonna really push through the range of motion. Even then, we're not gonna to wanna to go from perfectly manageable to failure in one fair swoop. We're gonna to wanna to build up gradually, but build up in a way where we know we're gonna be challenging ourselves. If you're comfortable doing six reps and you only add five pounds, either side of the bar or two kilograms to those dumbbells, that's not really gonna challenge you. You need to be bumping it up by 10 kilograms until suddenly you get to the point where your muscles can only handle one or two reps and those, and those alone, are the sets that we would consider working sets, that we would consider effective sets. Everything else is just warm up. Everything else is preparing the muscle for what's about to come. Depending on what exercises you are actually working with, you're gonna really need to play around to find out your positioning, your angles, so you can get maximum strength output. So when setting up for this type of exercise, obviously we want maximum strength output but we also want maximum safety. That is why we need to be very careful with our angles. You can see the bench is pretty much under the bar, but with this Smith machine, which I use the Smith machine for safety purposes because I want that get out of jail free card. Going there alone, I've got no one who can bail me out if shit hits the fan. Basically right on top where the bar is effectively touching my nose. It's not that big a deal, you basically just get your nose out of the way keep pushing, get that one big rep in.
as you can see in this particular workout, my big exercise was a Smith Machine overhead press, which is not a great exercise in my opinion. I'd rather be doing this with heavy dumbbells with a spotter. But number one, the dumbbells in this gym don't go heavy enough. And number two, I've got no friends. So <laughs> impossible situation. The point is because Smith Machines vary in terms of angles, in terms of the benches that you're using, you need to fiddle around and find the perfect setup for this particular Smith Machine to get the maximum output. Of course, you can follow that up and use whatever approach you want on different muscle groups. So for me, biceps and triceps, yes, I work them. Yes, I want them to look aesthetic, but in terms of size, I'm not particularly bothered about having huge bulging arms. I've always found that my arms have been very responsive. I hit three to four heavy sets of three to four reps. I find that is effective in this training style to get the desired results. In conclusion, guys, if you've come across this video and you're a little bit unsure of what I am talking about, check out some of the workout videos on my training playlist, which I am gonna link here. See if they are helpful to you. I am not claiming that I've reinvented the wheel here. The information is out there, but it is admittedly not quite as popular as traditional training methods. Maybe that is because although this method is based on getting stronger and lifting as heavy as possible, because of the dietary requirements, the figures that you're lifting, whilst impressive and challenging for yourself, are not gonna be comparable to a power lifter's lift, for example. You're not gonna be doing those six plate squats. You're not gonna be lifting 500 kilos on the bench press, but you are not bothered about that. You are bothered about the aesthetic results, about increasing those muscle fibers. That is the type of muscle density we're talking about. Check out myofibrillar hypertrophy versus sarcoplasmic hypertrophy if you're unsure what I'm talking about. And I'm sure you will find various articles, various YouTube videos from much more scientific people than myself, which will explain the difference, which will explain the difference in results, and which will explain what I believe are ultimately the benefits of that style of training. Cheers for checking out this video, guys. Hope it's been helpful. And until the next one. Bye-bye.